ogskradio.com, lush1.bandcamp.com. Um, I wanted to get into it. We, we had talked, to, uh, I think it was like on Instagram, bro, and there was something about uh, sampling. Yeah. And you had gone through something with sampling. Oh, did I ever? Break did it I down, ever. break it down. So um, I did the, uh, I, I was fortunate enough to curate the soundtrack to a, a film called Dragon Eyes back in 2013. And that film uh, featured Jean-Claude Van Damme. It was a really, really dope indie film based, you know, uh, my older brother, John, shouts to John Hyams, directed the film. Um, I had eight songs on the soundtrack. You know, other homies, Cadillac Ron were on the soundtrack. Uh, it was lit. But um, one of my records on there had a sample. And I didn't even realize it because it was so old. I didn't know what the sample was. I wasn't the producer of the record, but um, there's there's a trail that goes back apparently, and uh, yeah, I did basically a large portion of the money that I made from curating that soundtrack went to paying for the, the clearance sample. of the sample. Correct. No shit. In, t- in in the 2000s, like this is not like a Bismarcky, like yeah. Beastie Boys early 90s. Like, this, I didn't know. It yeah, shit. this is still cracking, bro. What, what advice or what did you learn from it, dog? Shit. Well, what I learned was when when you're just making your own music and you're putting out music independently, it's kind of cool if you get sued for a sample clearance yeah. because that means that you're successful. Someone's that, looking at you. Yeah, 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 you're on the radar to that degree. But if you're doing things like placements and there's major outlets that are associated with it, that kind of puts it on blast. You got to be below the radar. It's kind of like, let's say it's graffiti. It's the equivalent of, you know, bombing the streets as opposed to being in a motherfucking gallery. You know what I mean? Like, you know what, straight up... If or remember you, if when you, H&M tried to fucking uh, steal yeah, homies uh, yeah. design earlier this year? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, if you apply those rules to, like, anything, it pretty much is the same, dog. You yeah. got to keep it at a... After it goes to a certain amount, then, like, oh, we got to look at it now. But it was cool when it was under this mark, but now there's money. Like, if you know what I mean? It does That's break it, it down. That, once, once somebody realizes, once some old white man in a suit and tie realizes that this is a commodifiable entity this is something they can make money off of that's when it becomes an issue you know what i mean samples included bandcamp.com what about uh distribution man what could you tell us about distribution artists i mean only because you've been in the game you've you've dealt with it you know what i mean what what could you tell a young artist right now well in 2018 going on 2019 i'm not sure when this is going to come out it might be (laughs) it might be 2019 when y'all see this but um it's an interesting phase for the industry because the whole concept of artist development, A and Rs, and all that—that's out the window. Yes, yeah, true. That shit don't exist anymore. Like, if you're getting a major deal at this point, it's because you already have a buzz, and that's—it's kind of cool because it levels the playing field. Like, if you're if you're dope, and um, you're and you know and you're savvy on getting your music out to the people, they will hear it. You will be successful. But, you know, if you're dope and you don't have that following, you ain't going to get a motherfucking deal. Yeah. So with that being said, you don't really need distribution. You could do all that shit yourself. Unless they talking about cashing out, unless you have enough, unless you have a value, like, and already have a pre-established name as an artist, as to where they need to cash out for you, do that shit yourself. Bang, bang. Fuck their greedy ass hands bang, bang, bang. putting it in your pocket. You feel me? Like... Do that shit your damn self. Lush1.bandcamp.com. So, uh, judging, hosting, you still doing that? Yeah, you know, I'm always going to be a part of battle rap culture, um, whether I like it or not. I've had to take a step back because I don't want, when all said and done, and earlier I said it's not up to me to decide what I'm known for. It's not up to us as the artists yeah. to decide what makes us hot. But... I know that I have more to offer the world than just being known as a battle rap host and entity. And my music's been successful on its own. I got a motherfucking platinum plaque in France. You know what I mean? Like, for my music, got nothing to do 
with battle rap. So I just want to show people that there's other things that um, that I'm contributing to this culture on that high of a level. I, I'll yeah, sign yeah, you yeah, off the air. Course, I'll sign you off the air, and you know I can't jock on the air and shit. But I was telling you off the air. Dog, I won't stop the, you. <laughs> the project and it's real, recognized, real. No restraint. No up, jocking. Straight up, go back. Anyone listening to this and listen to the full project, like. Any project that he's on, and if you don't catch the vibe, if you don't catch what it is, ah, I mean, you gotta be hating a lot, dog. I mean, even Appreciate um, how did you, how did the connect come with Bobby? Like, so we have Bobby Butcher. Um, it's crazy because he was working really closely with uh, homies of mine that are dope musicians, but also known from the battle rap scene, like my boy Ilmac, uh, my boy Chase Moore who's an incredible producer as well as MC and uh, my boy Fredo. And they were already working with Bobby, who, if y'all don't know, his name used to be Severe the MC. He was from the Anaheino Collective. Uh, he himself provoked the Wino, all them. Uh, yeah. Shouts to the homegirl Revs. They was all making fire music together. There's a, a huge record called Stay True by Self Provoked and, and uh, Severe, now known as Bobby Butcher. Uh, but uh, we just met. We was vibing. We was the two like uh, dudes that liked the other side of hip hop. Like we we make music that girls like. You know, you know what I'm saying? We're we're fly. We like to dress. We're flashy. We just we just we just meshed, and out of everybody, we stuck together, and uh, we've been rocking hard for the past couple of years. Check that project out. Hangovers yeah. and, and withdrawals. withdrawals. Yeah, check that one up front. Uh, front to back, old school. When you had a tape, you could play both sides. Hey, you, could, you don't have to push it. no no forward button on that project. Coming from you, that means a lot, cause I know you ain't no bullshitter. Right? Nah, and, and I and I'm very fucking like, nah, you could have came better on that one track. I was scared but... <laughs> when I first came. The first time I came to OG Husky, I was like, are they gonna roast me? Like, I'm a little weird for these guys. I don't know. But, <laughs> Ended yeah. up being one one of the biggest biggest people, one of the biggest homies that supported us. Uh, yeah. People don't even know behind the scenes. Cause, cause of your personality and because of what you stand for, a lot of shit, you stood by us like through thick and, and always thin, will. Uh, this, this is OG Husky, like straight up. So I mean, even when it came, it is what it is. Not getting too much, but even when it came down to business, and I knew that oh, yeah. it was, you had to butt heads and you were in there like over us. You know what I mean? That was like that always. I always look out like I do appreciate that shit. Though. Real Angelinos know the deal, bro. If you're really from here, if you're really born and raised in this soil. And you know the principles, and you and you understand the essence of where we from. Is no question. And he's not a rich white kid. It's just a fucking joke. So you know, I'm up yeah, and start yeah, copying yeah, that could, shit. No, <laughs> like they, I mean, they, like, they, they but, but, but OG Husky Radio said he was a rich one. Nah. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's good. Understand that shit. There's the west side of LA. <laughs> well, look, you know what they say. You know the word assume, right? Yeah. Assumptions. When you make assumptions, and when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. Ass you me. Assume. Word up. And, and oh, to bring it all full circle, how it came back is Cadillac Ron. Rest My in peace. Brother. Rest in paradise. Uh, that's how we linked up. Absolutely. How'd you link up with Cadillac Ron? Well, me and Caddy from the same section. Like he from, you know, we from the same, uh, we from the same crew. We from the same side of town. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and I used to fuck the girls that lived on his street that he grew up on. Like, see, there's two <laughs> sisters. Sh shouts to Jesse and Alexis. Um, <laughs> and and um, used to fuck them back in. Back in like I'm saying like middle school, early high school, yeah, I mean, not in the '90s, and he he lived on their block, so we used to kick it. But then it wasn't until a few years later that, that we really came together, and then uh, we've been inseparable ever since. Uh, shouts to my godson Eli, who um, you know what I'm saying, uh, who Caddy when he passed away uh, blessed me with, and uh, and. Now, um, Caddy lives on through him forever and ever, dog. Cadillac Ron. And look up his music if y'all don't know. Cadillac Ron, one of the most slept on, dopest, most innovative artists. In I, I don't know if you're from LA and you don't have a favorite song. It's like, what the yeah, fuck? You, like, ain't got you, a favorite. <laughs> you don't have a favorite. I don't think you're from LA. Hollywood Miracle High. Mile, <laughs> Hollywood High. Yeah, you got it here. <laughs> OG Husky Radio. Um, want to thank you for coming through man off top let, let them know the projects though we got uh so the, so this year so this year december 17th of 2017 we released fresh coast non-perishables volume four was very very well received um 
got a lot of love for that um that featured my single white lies featuring bobby butcher that was our first major release together then after that my solo record oh um my solo record above the devil lush one above the devil and that's what 667 means is one above the devil so lush one above the uh, devil um, nice yeah, okay yeah. i was gonna ask this yeah okay. that's yeah yeah that's what that means um so that yeah that came out in like march of this year and then there was 667 uh cult we uh, we released a crew album called cultivate then bobby and i had hangovers and withdrawals and now i got kennedy bands which is will be dropping by the time you hear this. Will be dropping by the time. Lush one dot bandcamp dot com. Thank you for coming through as always, bro. Anytime, man. You feel me? This this this, this, this family man, is there ain't no going back at this point. I'm Straight like, up. You feel me? Like we in this the long way. So OGSQ Radio, stay posted. More interviews to come. <laughs> 